Good evening. The world around us is in constant motion. Nearly every form of life can detect a stimulus and respond uh, seamlessly to it. So if we look at machines and structures that we are manufacturing, actually most of these structures are extremely static. They're made of stiff, bulky materials with no intrinsic flexibility. So as we have more and more technology all around us, we still don't have technology that really interacts with us, that responds to us. We don't have any machine that can climb stairs, avoid obstacles, or even hug someone. So we believe that soft technology will take us to places where hard technology has hit a wall. So tonight, Jamie and I will share some of the research in each of our labs, where we'll show you how soft technology can be taking us to the future. So Jamie's research is focusing on robotics, but reconfigurable robotics. There are 43 muscles in the face alone. If you want to make, make a robot using conventional mo motors to recreate that, it will be impossible. Maybe that's exactly why the Terminator could never smile. <laughs> Achieving the softness of a smile is our goal. It lies in increasing the active degrees of freedom in a robot. And that is what my research group focuses on. Creating new kinds of soft robots with an increased degrees of freedom so they could morph from one form to another seamlessly. This is the origami space shuttle. Origami is a paper art where you fold a piece of paper to make various shapes. We apply the same type of idea to a robotic origami where a piece of, or it looks seemingly uh, very thin, piece of uh, sheet of a robot folds into multiple shapes depending on the predetermined sequence of folding patterns. The most versatile folding patterns are known to be triangular box pleats. When you think about it, if each triangular shape can fold into virtually any shape possible. These triangular tiles are thin, but they're composed of multiple layers of microchips, sensors, and circuits. Also, a unique motor called actuators. Currently, these actuators are made of shape memory alloys that would react to a very small current. And, once, and these can be controllable. And as you can see, they can be considered as a controllable hinges. And one in each and every one of these hinges can be programmed as well. That means we can control the shape flexibility, rigidity, and stiffness of the robot. The sensor layer of the robot accommodates various types of sensors depending on its application. For example, for a patient who has a uh, facial palsy after following a stroke, we can imagine a device that can form itself graciously onto the face and form tightly enough that the sensors embedded, they can measure the minute muscle movements of the face. This will restore the lost movement of the patient. For the circuit and the sensory layers, it's very important that these circuit electronics expand, stretch with the transformation of the robot. And Stephanie, she will tell you more about her research on biocompatible elastic circuits. So over the last 50 years, electronic circuits have been primarily designed for computational purposes. We have electronic devices all around us. We have laptops smartphones, even autonomous vacuum cleaners at home. So electronics is everywhere, yet it's not anywhere, because electronic circuits are actually not designed or they cannot conform round or curved structures. So instead of focusing on developing electronic circuit that would perform better or faster, my research takes a slightly different path. I'm exploring how to make flexible or even stretchable electronic circuit. So we can envision that one day we'll have miniaturized smartphone with a very tiny display that we can stretch into a very large screen so that you can share the image with your family. Or on another field, we can imagine to have a band-aid that is very almost invisible already, but then at the same time, it can discreetly monitor your vitals or even wound healing. So today, electronic circuits are prepared on a piece of silicon wafer. So this is a slice of silicon. Integrated circuits are made onto this material. As you can see, this is very flat, very rigid, so it's not meant to deform or bend. My research is actually exploring another material as a substrate. So we're working with this substrate, which is a piece of silicone rubber. This is a material that is fully elastic, 
it can stretch back and forth many times or once or many times and it can conform seamlessly any shapes of your body and particular three-dimensional structures. So the challenge in making stretchable electronics is actually in the how we're combining the soft elastic material with those conventional electronic materials. Because indeed, even for the stretchable electronic circuit, we still need the material, the electrical material to ensure the electrical function of the circuit. So we're actually facing what is called the soft to hard challenge. How do we combine these two kinds of material? But we are every day finding new materials, new processes and technology to go around this. So now that we have this technology, what can we do with it? So one project in my lab is to design a smart glove that will host a myriad of sensors just like our own skin. So the glove with its electronic circuit will be able to be completely flexible so that one patient who has a prosthetic hand could actually be fitted with this glove and recover some tactile sensation. But of course, in order to make this uh, even further, to push that even further, we need to have substantial innovation in the field of neuroprosthetic so that actually the sensation that is detected by the smart glove can be relayed back to the nervous system of the patient. So my lab is also exploring how soft technology can allow us to make better adapted or better interfaced neural, neural implants so that we can really have structures that interface the most delicate tissue that are the nerves, the spinal cord, and the brain. We are aiming to create the fundamental components of the softer interface. Stephanie with her biocompatible elastic circuits and myself with active multi-degrees of freedom robotic origami. Ultimately, soft robots and devices will introduce a new paradigm of technology. It's intuitive, responsive, tactile with a softer interface. We strongly believe this is where the soft technology will lead us into the future. Thank you. <laughs>